Good afternoon. This is Chris Hayes here with Chris Hayes team at Keller Williams in WLA. And today we're going to do a reactions to The Simpsons. This is called Guilty Bites and it's from season 9, episode 10. So uh, let's get rolling. You see, the law business is a little slow, and since most of my clients wind up losing their houses, this was a natural move for me. <laughs> most of his clients end up losing houses. Well, I don't know if I'd want this, uh, this fellow to be my real estate agent, but all said and done at the end of the day, it'd uh, be interesting to see how this plays out. Helping people find homes. That must be really rewarding. Yes, the money is good. But the beauty is you get to stay in the house until it's sold. Come on, guys. Let's go for a swim. No, taboo, taboo. We're not allowed to do that. That's uh, that's trespassing there in and of itself. And you know, Marge said us a little something about how intriguing it must be helping folks locate their new homes. That tends to be a very common expression from folks that are expressing an interest in getting in the real estate business is, is they love looking at houses and they like the flexibility of time. Oh boy, I've got a lot to learn before that license test. Don't worry, Mom, we'll help you study. Of course, we'll have to cut back on our own homework. What in the heck is a dwelling? Yes, in order to be a real estate agent, you have to take some education in order to qualify to sit for the state exam. Typically, that's between 90 and 180 hours of education. Oftentimes, it's done online. Once you pass the online courses, then you're eligible to sit for the state exam. Once you pass the state exam, then it's time to affiliate yourself with a real estate brokerage. And uh, voila, you can start selling real estate. So, you're married and you're looking for your first house, Mr. and Mrs. Super. Man. Oh, don't listen to my husband. He's just an idiot. Now, I'm a veterinarian, and I need to keep lots of sick animals in my house. Is that permitted? Not in my damn house. <laughs> it's so funny in my experience selling real estate. A lot of times, the lady is the dominant person in actually picking the property. Husband's along for the ride with two famous words, yes, dear. Well, this neighborhood is zoned R3, which allows dogs, cats, phone answering monkeys, and, oh, I'll never memorize all this. The purpose of the real estate exam is to educate you in the terminology of real estate. The actual practice of being successful and making money in it is not quite the same as what it takes in order to pass the exam. So passing the exam, that's to get you set up and understanding all the processes and terminology involved in licensing and to actually make money selling real estate, you need to learn how to sell as well. There's over 50 years of real estate experience right in this room, and 42 of those years are gills. Marge, it's a real pleasure. You got any leads? I need some leads, please. <laughs> this guy's begging for leads, right? Le leads are the, the natural progression in the sales process of, you know, if you wear your name badge or if you're out walking your puppy dog and you see a neighbor and strike up a conversation or if you're in the grocery store or, my goodness, all your, your church congregation or your co-workers, all, those, all these folks out there um, are the potential for leads, right? It's a matter of identifying people that are in your sphere of influence, um, providing them with information, and so that when they think of real estate, they think of, of, of me as their real estate resource, so that if they have some questions, they have somebody they can call on. There are lots of ways to generate leads in the real estate business, uh, open houses, all sorts of things, all sorts of things. This is a little bit off here. And there's Nick Callahan. A headset telephone? I thought those only existed in the movies. Yeah. Guess who sold the Whitman place? Hey, oh boy, I remember way back when my very first headset is actually a wired headset uh, to a landline. Go figure that in the old days. And then, uh, yay! You know what? In our brokerage, we do have a bell that rings whenever folks close a property because it is a cause for celebration. It means a buyer or a seller accomplished their real estate objectives. And uh, one of our wonderful Keller Williams agents helped them accomplish their dream. And so it is cause for celebration. There it is! Get out. Oh my goodness, that brings back some uh, fun times. Uh, probably about 20 years ago, I ran my first billboard, uh, Your Home Sold, Guaranteed Sold or I'll Buy It. Gee, that picture makes your butt look big. I thought so too, but they said it sells. I didn't take a picture of my butt, it was just my head. <laughs> Why, isn't this kitchen horribly cramped? <laughs> 
Why, yes, it is. Well, I suppose we could get used to it. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to settle. You know, I've always loved the house you're in now. Really? Well, maybe we should stay put. Thanks for your honesty, Marge. My pleasure. I applaud Marge's honesty in this. I really do. The side on this that I would, I would kind of question a little bit with Marge is, it's like, just because you've always liked it, Marge, doesn't mean that that's what's going on in their life. They may have some, order, some other motivation uh, behind considering another property. Maybe they're upsizing. Maybe they're downsizing. Who knows? Who knows? Well, like we say, the right house for the right person. Listen, it's time I let you in on a little secret, Marge. The right house is the house that's for sale. The right person is anyone. Oh my goodness, real estate is not supposed to be the pressure business. Buying and selling a property is a very stressful season in people's lives. It, it ranks on up there with changing jobs or getting married or getting divorced or relocating to another area. Relocating the place that you go home at night and lay your head and have your birthday parties and your barbecues and Christmases and all those things. If you're going to change that at some of your most private moments and you're going to change up and root that to another location, there's plenty enough stress involved in that without a salesperson creating a pressure situation in your world. Now, please keep in mind, a real estate transaction, once you've entered into it, has several key dates. So anytime you put a timeline to anything in your life, including real estate or a buy-sell agreement, you're gonna, you're gonna feel a little bit of pressure in your life. As long as you're following your agent's uh, directions and their counsel, you should be able to manage a lot of those stressful things and just understand, it sure is a pain in the tail for a month, two months, maybe three months, depending if you're on the buy side of a transaction or the sell side of a transaction. But once you're done with that transaction, you should be hopefully set for the next several, several years. All I did was tell the truth. Of course you did, but there's the truth and the truth. Let me show you. It's awfully small. I'd say it's awfully cozy. That's dilapidated. Rustic. That house is on fire. Motivated seller. That's a beauty. Forget about that house. That's the murder house. He said something at the very beginning about telling the truth. You never want to take a chance on yourself in a predicament where you're expressing information as a real estate agent that is untrue or knowingly untrue. Give people the right information so they feel at peace with what their decisions are and they're fully informed and everything has been disclosed to them. That precludes 99% of lawsuits. You better sell something. Because cubicles are for closers, Marge. Anybody who doesn't sell a house their first week gets fired. So Marge is getting a little bit of pressure from her brokerage to sell a property and maybe being encouraged to compromise a little bit on her values. And uh, you know, people sell at different paces. Uh, sometimes the, the first sale happens in the first week. And sometimes the first sale doesn't happen for a month or two months down the road. It's, you know, when you make it the, the first sale is not a gauge of your long-term career in real estate or how truthful and real the salesperson is in trying to help a consumer, for example. Arch, stay on course, dear. Stay true to your values. Oh, my diddly eye. Will you look at this place? <gasps> and the price has been slashed repeatedly. When it says the price has been slashed, of course it sounds so great in the context of the show because it was a murder house, but let me talk to you momentarily about a price reduction. Price reductions by a seller on real estate does not necessarily mean the seller is desperate. You know, people have different pricing strategies and different ways in which they buy and sell things. For example, in the market, by the way, is forever changing regularly, super dynamic out there. So there's not many houses that are currently available for sale on the market right now. The seller might decide to price their house up a little bit to take advantage of the supply and demand side of real estate. So. Um, the market also can be very responsive. So typically the first three weeks or so are the most critical times for when a new home comes on the market. And if it's not under contract or uh, hardly any showings in the first three weeks, uh, it's, there's a very good chance it might be slightly overpriced or it could be something wrong with the condition, but it could be slightly overpriced as well. And so when a seller comes down, what they're doing is they're actually testing the market at different price points to find where the value of what they have to offer is meeting the market and the demand on the market for that value. Listen up, everybody. Marge Simpson sold her first house. Oh, oh that's yeah, very nice. Oh, nice. The murder house. Whoa. Wow, oh, now that's something. Booyah! Wow, you must have told a whopper to unload that death trap.
And what'd you use, Marge, huh? The old buff and bluff, the hey old Murray, the Sasquahanna shuffle, huh? Huh? I have not heard these terms in my real estate career, so maybe I'm sheltered. <laughs> this is the murder house? Mm hmm. Oh, <gasps> you mean the infamous jealous Jackie murders? Mm hmm. By the way, in uh, the state of Louisiana, we are not required to disclose if a house has had a death or a murder in it. <laughs> $300 for doing nothing? I feel like such a crook. Don't worry. Gets easier every week. So, uh, I kind of predicted that she would come clean on this. And, uh, you know, I, I find in my experience, um, people in general are truthful, right? Uh, you do have some, some turkeys out there, but, you know, at the end of the day, most people are truthful, but the truth is real. And uh, my experience with most consumers is if it's something that's truthful and they may not necessarily want to hear it, go ahead and put it out there. Uh, it's better to know sooner rather than later so that they can make um, their decisions accordingly. And I felt like they got the short end of the, uh, the stick or somebody was being untruthful, those kinds of things. I hope you enjoyed this reaction to The Simpsons. This was fun. I had not seen this before and um, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was fun critiquing this or, or reacting to it. Please subscribe, like, or comment to our video, and um, we'll see you on the next go around. Thanks so much for tuning in. Talk to you soon.